He's a former Black Cap himself. He's a coach of the Otago Sparks, and they are the 50 over one day current champions in New Zealand. Craig Cumming joins us again. Happy New Year, mate. Yeah, great to hear you back, Marty. Happy New Year to you as well. I know that you're really busy at the moment uh, with your women trying to chase that damn Blaze side who just seem uh, unbeatable at the moment. Well, they are at the moment, especially, yeah, 2020, they've been outstanding. And you look at their roster, um, you know, when you've got people like Maddie Green, Millie Kerr, Jess Kerr, uh, Lee Kinsbrook, um, you know, they're, they're a very, very good side. And, you know, we, we tried to throw everything at them on uh, Sunday here in Dunedin. And, um, you know, we tried a, a wee couple of wee innovations that uh, didn't quite pan out. But, again, they still had the answer. So, uh, at the moment, they are they are number one. But, as you know, Marty, to, to win the competition, you've got to get to the final and then win it. So, still a fair bit of water to run under the bridge. But, um, at the moment, yeah, I think a lot of us are, are trying to work out, well, you know, if we get to play them, we don't have to worry about them now until if we do get to the final. Um, so, we've got other things to worry about. But... They are very good, and their records suggest that, but uh, on the back of, you know, having some, some wonderful players as well. One day last night in Hyderabad, India won it by 12 runs. They scored 349 for 8 off 50. Us chasing fell just short, 337 after Bracewell's magnificent 140. Uh, let me just first establish here, ladies and gentlemen, that two old pale stale males fell asleep, both of us, didn't we? I mean, how long did you last, mate? Come on. Oh, well, that's the problem, Marty. I, I can't remember, because... I was watching it on my phone in bed, and, and then I wake up at some like, godly hour, and the phone slipped off onto my chin, and I've got no pillows. And, um, you know, then you check the score, and you go, what the heck's just happened here? What have I missed? So, um, you know, we've got day jobs, don't we? We're not all going to sit up. But what an amazing game of cricket. I, I played at that stadium, Marty. I played there for the Bolts, um, actually, in the Champions League. Wonderful, wonderful stadium. Beautiful pitch. Um, outstanding outfield. Um, it's one of those ones, you know, big open sky and um, it just makes you want to play cricket. And You know, when you look at it, though, when you have a player getting a double hundred, I mean, yeah, once upon a yeah. time, Marty, you and I can remember a hundred was a good score. Um, a double hundred. Um, and then, you know, we were sort of out of it. And then just the, the skill and the power of, of Michael Bracewell just shows now. That's why people like you and I always hide under the under the couch now because games aren't finished. No, it's exactly no. the last ball's bowled because... Yeah. I mean, you're 100 and, what is it, 140 or 160 to 6, and you're chasing 380, man, it's packed up and go home time. And then you've missed probably the best part of the game. Yeah. It's just unbelievable and just shows for New Zealand. Like, we're still, I think, trying to find our rhythm. We've got a few players out again. And this is the tough thing, Marty. You and I have spoken before. No with Southie, no Williamson. How good are we really? But when you see someone like Michael Bracewell, who just at the moment seems to be making every post a winner, Test cricket, T20 and, and one-day cricket, we've got some depth. So, I mean, you know, and let's, let's establish that fact, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to the one-day Cricket World Cup at the end of the year, which is, this is all leading towards, this is all part of the big build-up. Southie and Williamson injury, of course, permitting, are going to be there, and that's going to strengthen our side, all right. Look, 349 on that pitch. We did let them get away. You've got to say that. I mean, you know, we kept Coley quiet, which is unusual considering the form he's been in. But when one guy hits 208 off 149, I, you know, all I can say, that's a guppy-like innings against the West Indies, isn't it? When you go nap like that... I mean, what do you, what can you do to shut that down? Oh, it's really hard. I mean, he just played control. But what he did is at the start, he was always trying to be, not inventive, but in one-day cricket, you notice, Marty, they're not playing power games. Now, they don't need to in India because the outfields are so fast, but there's a huge amount of, we've spoken, craft and, and a lot of batting, hitting the ball on the ground, hitting it in the, in the gaps. And he was able to keep his run rate or his strike rate above 100. Um, and then once he got after you know, that, that 110, 120 balls, like you just said about Martin Guptill in that World Cup, they put the foot down. Yeah. And that's how you get it. At the end of the day, he's faced half the balls, um, and then he's got a strike rate up to, what, 130, 135 because of, of, of just genuine skill. And then at the end, they do they do hit it. But, you know, it's really important at the start. It wasn't about crash and bash and just dot, 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 four, dot, 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 four. There was ones and there's twos, and they were beating fielders along the ground. So... Really hard to stop, you know, really hard to stop. And I, I thought New Zealand did well. I mean, you've got Shipley in there for the first time. He's got some real talent, Marty. Um, I know, you know, he had a tough start, and it's not an easy place to be making your debut, but the guy's 17 foot three. Um, you'll see the bounce that he's getting. Latham was taking it above his head, um, you know, and he's also a very good bat. He can hit the ball a long way. So great to have him introduced into the, into the setup. I think he's got a big future. Um, Tickner was running in front of the ball hard. Um, Jacob Duffy's there. 
you know, we do miss Bolt, we know that, um, and without Saudi. But I, I think it's a really good opportunity for these guys, and they'll learn heaps. And as you said, when it comes to the, the World Cup over there, we'll know who our best players are in their conditions. It's not about who performs well here in New Zealand. It's actually who's going to be our best players over in those conditions. And the great thing about Michael Bracewell, with his batting where he is, you know his batting strength, but also now with his bowling. We, we've got a genuine, with him and Satin, two genuine um, spin bowling all-rounders, and that's crucial when you go to the subcontinent, especially in Test cricket and one-day cricket. Yeah, just so you mentioned Trent Bolt there. I was speaking with Dooley yesterday. He's on the program tomorrow. He was just off, actually, because we've got Ryan Fox on this afternoon. He's, I'm not name-dropping, but he was. He was Jesus. just... He, and I'm not... Look, he, he was he was saying to me, oh, look, I, 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 Marty, make it tomorrow. I'm just off to play golf with Foxy and Bolty. Uh, I'm just so off... nothing changed with Dooley. So, it's just, no, nothing changed. Once upon a time, he used, to, he used to say, I'm off to play golf with Sid. But he didn't say it very loudly, and he certainly didn't say it on the radio, I can tell you that. So Bolt is actually bowling in this, I think, Dubai or Saudi, whatever it is, T20 competition. There's so many of them going on. I can't keep up, mate. You've got one in South Africa going on at the moment. I mean, we're playing here, obviously. Uh, you've got the big bash going on. Now you've got the Saudi one. Players split all over the world. I don't know how many people are watching this. I don't know if anyone's actually watching this, but it doesn't really matter, does it? they got their TV deals. Yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Um yeah, and I mean, South Africa one's going gangbusters. I mean, half the teams or most of the teams were bought by the Indian franchises. So, you know, I saw the other day the, the Wanderers was full, you know, mm, full house mm. for one of their games. And um, I suppose, you know, as long as, I mean, we've still got to have our international windows and maybe it becomes like, you know, rugby. And that's actually probably a poor example, Marty. But maybe we need to have our international windows and we've got to have domestic windows. And maybe this time of the year, it is about domestic T20 leagues with South Africa, Australia and us and, there's a period, obviously, with the IPL, but it is very confusing. All I know is the players are winning out of this, Marty, because there are only so many players in the world, and if you are half decent, you could pick up a deal and cash in. And the challenge we have here in New Zealand, though, Marty, is we've got to, we don't want to be losing our players across all these different formats um, or different competitions because we just don't, we just don't have enough. Yeah, and, exactly. You know. The landscape, you know it just as well as, if not better than I do, Marty. It's like, you know, broadcasting, it's like TV. It's just so fast and it's evolving so quickly. I, I just don't know where it's going to go. And I just hope the powers of B actually do, Marty. Otherwise, we could be, we could end up with a really watered down product everywhere. And we don't want that. Craig coming with us. All right, summing it up then, that was at Hyderabad, 3.49 for 8 off 50 for them. Us chasing 3.37 all out, 49.2. And an incredible innings there from Bracewell. He just couldn't quite get there, but damn, he gave it a good shot and gave them one hell of a scare, Michael Bracewell, 140 off 78. Reminds me of that Stoinis innings years ago at Eden Park where, <laughs> yeah. my God, he would he would be a legend forever if he'd guided us home, but he just fell short. Okay, we move from there on Why to... Why did you just say guide us ass home? Are you Australian? Well, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, I was talking about Bracewell guiding us home. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, was, okay. yeah, I mean, I was commentating that Steinus one, and it ended with a run out at the non-strikers end. Um, but he, I mean, different ground, different things, but you're right. That's actually, you've done well to remember that because it's probably a spinning image of exactly what happened there. And uh, everyone thought Steinus was going to do it, and I think everyone probably backed Bracewell one yeah. stage at the end there where they need 20, you know. Um, but, you know, imagine Michael Bracewell, Marty, coming off having done that. You sit down, you've lost, but you've just done that. What are, what are the emotions? Okay, I'll go back to home? another one. I'll go back to another one then. I think it was 1996, and Harry scored 130 against Australia in a quarterfinal, and we lost. Yeah. Remember that? Okay, same kind of innings, isn't it? So, well, yeah, well the, you know, the, on three. The, 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 the point was uh, that that was Hyderabad. Now we go to Raipur. Uh, and is 350, look, and I said this before the last one-day World Cup, quickly and finally, that, look, was 300 the bottom score in England? But in the end, it wasn't. The semi-finals were 200 odd. In the final, we set 200 and something and, 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 and just about managed to defend it. So, you know, when we look at India, we look at the next one. I mean, the fascination is going to be, for me, what score gets set in the first innings? And is that going to be a benchmark for later in the year? Yeah, I think, um, well, yeah, it's a great point because we all thought you're right. All the talk before the England World Cup was about 3.20, 3.30. And you're right, it was, you know, 2.20, 2.30. Uh, I still think India, you, you've got to be chasing 300, Marty. I, I think with their conditions, with their outfields and, the, and their pitches, uh, they just don't bounce. It'll be about how much they turn. Um, but their one-day pitches are normally pretty flat. Um, so I think, I think 300 is the par mark. I, I really do. And... But you'll notice in different grounds, it does swing. Um, you look at the IPL franchises and their bowling attacks, um, it does make a big difference. So, yeah, I still think 300, using my knowledge or lack of, um, that's what you've got to be chasing, especially batting first.